All right, welcome back. Uh, part two of the co-op program. So as you recall, there was seven steps. Now we're gonna go through these seven steps one at a time. And uh, the first, and they are sometimes referred to as key features. So the first one is client chosen goals. The client chooses three goals. This is very empowering for the child because they have some, some say about what they're gonna do. Um, they may have to compromise with their parents, uh, you know, if they're really wacky goals. Um, and then uh, there's facilitation from the OT in generating these goals. Uh, so interview with the parents, daily activity log, and then um, some different kinds of assessment tools that might help to um, choose appropriate goals. Key feature two, dynamic performance analysis or DPA. There's a decision tree. Um, is the client motivated, yes or no? Do they have knowledge of the task? Do they have performance competence in terms of body orientation, object manipulation, task structure, or environment, and or environment? So as you can see, this analysis is, uh, is kind of a, a glorified, blown up activity analysis, right? But we want to really know about the, um, the, the, the skill and the goal before we embark upon um, doing it. Feature three, cognitive strategy use. So this is where we have all these acronyms. Um, there's a global cognitive strategy and the OT and the client discuss how to solve the, perf the performance problem using G, P, D, and C, right? So the G is, what's my goal? What do I wanna do? Well, I want to, um, uh, I want to do a forward roll. Plan, how am I gonna do it? Do carry out the plan and check how well did my plan work? So there's built-in feedback. So um, the plan is, how am I gonna do it? Well, I'm gonna um, crouch down, I'm gonna tuck my head, I'm gonna put my hands in a certain position, I'm going to uh, weight shift forward, right? Um, then I try it, then I see how it worked. The therapist introduces the strategy in a fun manner. For example, Captain GBDC, uh, I don't know, you know, fun enough. Um, it depends on the kid, it depends on what they're into, but we do wanna make it play-based as much as is possible and, and engaging. Um, the child then repeats the strategy in their own words, the therapist models the use of the strategy, and the child demonstrates an understanding of the strategy. So think about it, co-op is this cognitive orientation, right? And all of these are cognitive skills and abilities. Feature four is guided discovery. So the OT doesn't tell the child, this is how you're gonna solve this problem. This is how you're gonna do a forward roll. The child must discover the strategies to solve the performance problem themselves. Um, and we use guided discovery. One thing at a time, the therapist asks questions. Well, um, how do you think you're gonna get your head down to the mat? Um, how do you think uh, you might position your legs? What sort of speed of movement do you think you need to get over in your forward roll? Um, we coach, we don't adjust. So we're providing support, we're providing positive regard, but we're not being the, um, the educator of how you do this thing, right? And we also wanna make it obvious. We don't wanna like keep secrets and have it be like a tricky thing. We want it to be right out there. But the, the deal is that when somebody does something themselves, they're much more likely to understand how to do it than if me, the OT, tells them what to do, right? So it's a skill that the OT has to develop and also um, a, a set of skills that the child needs to develop. Feature five, enabling principles. So we want to enable this child's performance. To that end, make it fun, promote learning, work towards independence, and then, as I said um, a little earlier, promote generalization and transfer, right? So if 
I say to you, I want you to learn this skill. You're going to use it once. You're never going to use it again. You're not going to be as motivated as if I say, you're going to learn um, this skill in, in my class, and then you can apply it to all these other classes and all these other situations. And imagine this, you're going to be able to apply it to your work life. Um, the example that, that comes to mind is goal writing, right? So we work on writing goals in this class. We work on them in a bunch of other classes as well, because it's such a key OT skill to build. And, um, it enables us to generalize and transfer our goal writing, um, to other circumstances and situations. Feature six, parent caregiver involvement. So the parents or caregivers must attend three sessions. So they can't just send their kid to OT and be done with it. They have to be involved and they must assist with homework to promote this generalization and transfer of skills, right? So different tasks, different environment. We want the child to work on that and we need the family to contribute to that. Feature seven, the intervention format. So, uh, this program is applied over a 10 week program. If you're doing it, um, it to the structure of the co-op program, and there's a book that goes along with it and articles online and so on. So you can, um, you can, uh, get the low down on all of that. Sessions are one hour, as I said earlier, once or twice a week, all sessions start with this goal and plans for the session and change is measured by a performance quality rating scale. So the quality of the performance not only jumps in performance. So sometimes what's going to happen is that the child qualitatively has more grasp of what's going on, is uh, more able to approach the problem, is better at problem solving, engages in better um, uh, guided discovery, but they may not be able to actually master the task right away, right? So we measure performance with a quality rating scale. And eventually, our hope is that the child will improve their performance. Uh, case study of Mark. He's 10 years old. He's got developmental coordination disorder. He was referred to OT for motor coordination difficulties above average IQ, deficits in visual perception, that's VP, and visual motor integration, that's VMI, and his goal is to make a shot in basketball. Um, let's see, there's some more information in the presenter notes, uh, and I'm just looking that over. Mark reports that he feels left out, um, of playing basketball with his friends at recess because he has difficulties making a basket. He's 10 years old. He's very self-aware, right? Above average IQ. So he is going to be aware. Um, and this can be difficult too, right? The child can want to stop trying at a certain point because they just never get success. Mark tells you that he really wants to be able to make a shot just like his friends do. So here's the goal, throw the basketball into the net, right? We want to be explicit about this, the plan. I'm going to look where I'm aiming. I'm going to bend my knees. I'm going to reach high into the cookie jar. I'm going to make a rainbow when I throw the ball. So that's the movement. I'm going to throw the ball with my two hands, super power push. So that's, um, fancy kid lingo for, um, amount of force, right? So we have, uh, we have where you're going to go, the motion to get there, that's the rainbow, the superpower push, that's the force re uh, regulation, aim for the square on the blackboard, on the backboard, excuse me, and then the last two steps, which are on the right side of this slide, do carry out the plan and check how well did my plan work. If it didn't work, how do I correct, right? So that's the G, P, D, C. Confucius once said, tell me and I'll forget. Show me and I'll remember. Involve me and I'll understand forever. So that is at the heart of the co-op program that we're involving the child, we're, we're empowering the child and collaborating with the child in, in a client-centered practice, uh, practice 
And that is going to um, make a big difference in their ability to gain new motor skills. It's a cool program. All right, bunch of references and resources for you if you want them. You may think about this when we get to the um, assignment of the intervention plan. So put it in the back of your head. If you're like, yeah, whatever, now save this lecture, um, store it somewhere on your computer uh, because, or just duh, never mind, scratch that. Just ask, access the video on YouTube if you need it in the future because you have a kid that this would be appropriate for. So it's another tool in your toolbox. All right, everyone, that's it. Uh, if you have questions, please bring them to class. Come to my office hour, email me, um, wave your hands around. I will come running. And thanks so much for your kind attention. I'll see you in class. Take care. Bye-bye.